there is no perpetual motion. Over unity doesn't exist. However, not in physics, in the financial world, over unity does pretty good job. So let's say you have a hundred dollars in your pocket and now this is your unity. When you go and buy a coffee for two dollars then you have less of two dollars so you have under unity. Unity means one or one hundred percent. And this is classic example of over unity when one plus nothing equals a lot. Unfortunately, in physics, it doesn't work this way. Efficiency of everything that we know of is lower than one, lower than 100%, lower than unity. So if you would have energy for free, we wouldn't be worried about efficiency too much. Efficiency of solar panel is about 17%. Efficiency of gasoline engine is about 24%. Either say, forget about it. Just forget about it. Outdated concept. In physics, a physical system is a portion of physical universe chosen for analysis. So everything outside the system is known as environment. The environment is ignored except for its effect on a system. We're going to be concentrating on open and closed systems. That could be physical system, that could be also social system, and that could be political system. The open systems are the systems that allow interactions between their internal elements and environment. United States of America is one of those systems. Educational, military, industrial, economical, fence around Russia makes it less and less accessible, if any. So now let's talk energy delivered to the system and energy going out. Ребята, поверьте, я здесь ни при чем, я вообще здесь ни при чем. Я занимаюсь физикой. Я вам друг, я вам не враг. Ребята, вы что? Мне еще крыша не поехала от перегруза. Евреи не врут. Они чуть-чуть, как сказать, по-другому думают. Да, правильно сказал? Energy delivered is energy that is utilized by the device. Turn to mechanical for removing the snow. But if we would have had constant energy delivery, the efficiency is not important. How much is the losses? It's not important. So we only care about the efficiency for the device because we have to pay for the energy. The energy supply is limited for the big guys with the big bags and big packets. Vector, a quantity with magnitude and direction. Scalar, a quantity with a magnitude only. Speed, a scalar quantity that describes the rate at which something is moving. Velocity. A vector quantity that describes the rate of change of position. Acceleration. A vector quantity that describes the rate of change of velocity. Inertial reference frame. A frame of reference that is moving at a constant velocity. Stopped it. The job is done. Energy is gone. Inertial reference frame. A frame of reference that is moving at a constant
constant velocity. And reverse of that would be? Non-inertial reference frame. A frame of reference that is accelerating. alien spaceship heading towards Earth. These guys don't have a problem with laws of thermodynamics, they know much more, they are pretty much advanced civilization, and they're trying to calculate how much of fuel do they need to get to the Earth. They know exactly how efficient is their spaceship. So if efficiency is 30%, then the 70% are the losses. They know how different kind of sources of the energies are related to each other. How much of energy of one kind is needed to be converted to the energy of different kind. The amount of energy needed to heat 30 milligrams of water for one degree of centigrade is exactly the same one as the amount of energy needed to lift 12 and a half kilogram weight by one meter. And that's how the steam engine was born in their planets long time ago. Although mechanical energy and heat sounds different, they are all the same facet of energy. The total energy of entire universe is actually fixed. So coming back to thermodynamics, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It could only change form. So when they were playing with steam engine, they found that with that fixed amount of energy, energy cannot move from colder body to hotter body. And energy always moves in one direction, say heat. One of the famous aliens from that ship, Clausius, found very interesting properties when heat is transferred from hotter to colder body, entropy always increases. They first apply entropy as the measure of how heat dissipates. Of course, there's a heat in their spaceship. Whenever the hot things cool, the entropy increases. Now, interesting here is that this process is irreversible. They found that entropy of entire universe had to be increases to its maximum, and there's nothing you can do about it. And they called that second law of thermodynamics. Another alien, Boltzmann, was looking at that atomic structure and he had somewhat problem with it and he decided that he's gonna introduce uncertainty. Because nothing is certain. The free energy is not certain. So one of the postulates of Boltzmann was that atom will be traveling at certain speed at certain directions. So the bottom line is that atom can transfer energy to another atom. We're not going deep into this subject yet, but we're going to. But instead of calling it heat, we can call it energy. And that's one of the fundamental principles of energy transfer. So when we talk about entropy, we talk about the measure of this order, we can predict that universe will get always messier, very much disordered. But of course, changing order to this order is associated with doing something useful. The order of the sun changed to this order, but at the same time is heating the earth. The very much organized fuel system in the spaceship is taking the energy out of it, creating another disorder in order for the aliens to be closer to the Earth. In their invention, tokamak, deuterium and tritium in a high temperature are fused together, spitting out one neutron and giving out energy. So one of the studies that I'm doing is trying to extract energy from the particles but of course we're going to end up with Kapanadze, Akua and plenty of others who are developing similar way of transferring energy from one form to the other for the purpose of saving humanity from pollution from the big guys with the big bucks. We hope that aliens could help us but so far they didn't come yet so we don't know what's going on.
One of the icons in here is definitely Nikola Tesla. In 1887, he approached JP Morgan, known now as JP Morgan Banks. That was the time when he was fighting with Thomas Edison over domination of between DC and AC. He got finance and he started to build Wondercliff Tower in Shortham, Long Island. He had a student, Marconi, a brilliant guy who was learning very fast and this guy decided to steal the secrets from Nikola Tesla and open up his own corporation. Shortly after that he made the first experiment with communication wirelessly between England and United States of America. The relation was kind of bumpy and he decided to go to Bolina, California and build up his own power station that would be sending the energy over the air and over the earth all around the world controlling ships and all of the country. In 1924 government created RCA which was mostly government and big guys money and those guys decided to fight with Marconi. So somewhere in 1926 the deal was over, Marconi's power station was shut down by government. Marconi decided to sue government of the United States for big money. In January 7, 1943 Nikola Tesla died and the government of the United States came up with a brilliant idea to revoke the patent rights from Marconi and give it back to Tesla. But Tesla was dead, he didn't have any children, any wife or any beneficiaries. They get away with more. One of the brilliant things that free energy researchers are experimenting now with is Tesla coil. It's a simple arrangement of two coils, low voltage coil and high voltage coil. We could think of it as air transformer. That for transferring energy over the single wire, although it's not very much practical. Transferring energy in near field over the air is not a problem. And of course there is a need to explain what is near field, what is far field. One of the problems Nikola Tesla had with JP Morgan was that there was no control over the energy sent through the air from Wondercliff Tower. But as we know now, all world is based on AC. Niagara Falls has one of the biggest hydroelectric power stations. And it would be enough for the history files. In 90s, I was heavily involved in a number of scientific programs sponsored by Department of Defense, Federal Highway Administration, Department of Transportation, Virginia, Ohio, Army Corps of Engineers, Army Rangers, Columbus, Georgia, Copper Mining Industry, Gold Mining Industry, and plenty of others, serving mostly as Principal Investigator and Chief of Scientific Team. My office was located at 77th floor of World Trade Center 1, exactly the place of 9-11. After that, my approach to life changed. Governments are extremely worried about possibilities that somebody might show up with some sort of energy that doesn't have to be paid for. Russia, with troubling economy, is number one here. So it doesn't matter if it's true or it's not, and no government in the whole world wants you to come out with the devices that make energy that doesn't have to pay for. There is 1% of wealthy and 99% of the rest. The servants doing for them everything they want to. I'm very simple not yet sufficiently significant guy from the street who I believe didn't yet deserve the fate of Alexander Litvinenko. Я хочу тоже сказать, что я очень дружественно отношусь к русскому народу, простому русскому человеку. Far field and near field in open system. The system that is able to exchange mass and energy with outside environment. Everything outside of the circle is free space. Free space impedance is 377 ohm. The distance between circle is equal one lambda or one full period with the radius of the circle that is at the distance from the center of the circle of lambda over 2 pi we reaching the transition zone between near field and far field. On the near field inside the circle we're talking about high current, low voltage and effects mainly caused by magnetic component, the H field or the P field. On the far field outside the circle we're dealing with high voltage, low current and phenomena are mainly caused by electric E field. Let's take a look at near field and close by the sphere. Small circle around is the transition zone, lambda over 2 pi. 
yellow circle is a Fresnel zone. Terrier Capenate has chosen place for his experiment on the coast of the remote island nearby Laxi. There was no electricity on that island. Line of sight from that coast of the island to the coast of the land where a small hotel was rented by the crew was about 2 kilometers. We see the vice of Tariel Capenata on the left. Electrical motor 3 kilowatt in the middle and set of light bulbs. On the right there are tanks and light bulbs. The blue box is connected to the light bulb and electrical motor although the wires are barely visible. The device is connected to the ground wire and is working without any external power supply. For the people not familiar with the technology, that device was connected for quite a good few hours and was working as desired. Between people attending that event, we have Tariel Kapenadze, helper, Ministry of Turkish Government Finances rep, Georgian Government rep, Westel rep, three former generals of Turkish military, owners of TMC rep. That was a time where Tariel Kapenadze was trying to be or not to be in the area of influence. Initial energy use for power conversion and the process of energy conversion is not clear. However, there was no batteries there. And the device must of have means of supplying 5 kilowatt of power to the load. That is important as we have few other fellows that we need to talk about. One of the things that Tesla was playing with was transferring electricity over the distance. So was Marconi who was trying in Bolinas to build a super high power station controlling the whole world. I'm not saying that Tesla and Marconi were right in something. They were just normal people. And that was a different historical time. I'm trying based on physics that we know now to achieve something, to make progress. Once we don't know what is the origin of energy that is powering the device, there was a suspicion that some of Tesla technology being able to transfer energy over the air could be utilized in the device. I know it sounds crazy, but what the heck? Even though the Toriel Kapenazi device was in metal bags pointing at Faraday cage, I took 25 feet of the typical expected coil wire length and calculated with a frequency of 20 kilohertz to find out where we have near field, far field and the transition zone. So as you see in near field that transmission of energy couldn't be done and in a far field couldn't be done either and the distance was 2 kilometers. But if we were thinking for the moment not about air but about impedance of the medium other than air, we might be able to look for some answers. So what kind of game Akko is playing with us? It's not only Akko, it's everybody else that did the same trick all the time. As an example, I've got a key video electrostatic pump, which by its concept should work, it's from the Russian Forum. So we have a signal that is a creating high voltage, this balance of one side of the capacitor, but actually that would be the coil with a, the very high reactive impedance, and then uh, the ground will serve as a second part of the plate of the capacitor. And then we have a time delay, and that delay actually is the delay between the electrons coming from the ground trying to balance the other side of the capacitive reactance, and then by that time we have a load which is the light bulb that is connected dissipating the temporary balance achieved. Now we have a repeating situation and part of the energy should be used for the below voltage circuitry to sustain the motion. Of course the reality based on Actual physically should not work. Pretty familiar subject, Sivan. If the levels in the two basins are not equal, 
fluid flows from the basin with the higher level into the one with the lower level until the levels are equal. But that requires initial force. The tube can be placed in one fluid and filled by sucking onto it. So in other words, we're dealing with presence of one single impulse needed to start the process. And that is very much similar to the force created by short impulse of the device of Tariel Kapenadze, Adrian Gruska, Ruslan, Akua, Tiger, and plenty of others, probably 50 more. So the whole concept of electrostatic pump is based on the fact that we're supplying a single impulse that is starting the process and coupling to the source of energy that we don't have to pay for by opening the valve on thick water pipe you supplying energy to get access to the flow of water that could come from the river and doesn't have to be paid for but for that to happen that must be difference of potentials difference of levels and difference of forces that would carry on the job after the initial impulse is no longer present Electrostatic pump phenomena is based on electron inertia. Although we look at electron mostly from the perspective of quantum mechanics, not classical mechanics, we deal with the physical mass of an electron. And someone would say that this mass is immutable. But then we have a number of phenomena that we could observe. We have a friction and we have a heat that is dissipated to the air from the conductor that has large current flowing on it. So the higher is the current, the hotter is wire carrying on the current. We are not going deep now to electrostatic pump phenomena. It's the first introduction of the concept that might stay behind the devices that appears to look like work without power supply, battery or any other external source of energy, which of course is impossible. That must be energy conversion for that. To work. Now he's the device for that. This is the wire, and the, this is the other one wire that goes to the ground, and this is the ground.